Today, we are gonna talk about roll centers. Okay, so a lot of times people talk about raising roll centers and lowering roll centers, and I'm not really sure that even the people talking about it know what they're talking about. So uh, let's talk about it. Say, my name's Jeremy Caston. I am Cole Caston's mechanic and father, and I wanna just share with you a non-engineer's um, definition of roll centers and what they do to the car, how it handles, and how you can make adjustments to the car very easily that will adjust the roll center location and cause your car to handle differently. So let's take a look at this photo that we have here on the page. Uh, it's, you know, let's just say it's the rear shock tower with the rear lower suspension arms and the rear camber links attached to the shock tower. And then on the left and right, inside of the tire itself, we have the locations uh, where, the, where the hub is attached to the lower arm and where the camber link is attached to the top of the hub. So to draw out a roll center diagram, um, it's actually pretty easy. I'm gonna start at the right side of the vehicle you move across the vehicle by drawing a line from, let's say, where the, where the rear hub attaches to the suspension arm. And you draw a line straight through where the suspension arm is attached to the, to the hinge pin on the car. And through that line, you just continue it. So that's represented by this dotted red line going across the bottom of the screen and you run that line out as far as you can go. And then the next line that you draw from the right hand side of the screen is where your camber link location attaches to the rear hub. And then you have also the location that the rear camber link attaches to the rear shock tower. And you draw a line through those dots and then just keep on drawing that line. So that's represented by this other dotted line, the red dotted line. Okay, so in this example, um, it's actually pretty easy to see, but it's not always that way. Um, where those two lines that you drew through your pivot points on the car, where those two lines intersect is called your instant center. In this case, it just happens to be right on top of the other side of the car on the, the suspension arms hinge pin. Um, that's just coincidence. That's not, that's not going to always be the case. It's hardly ever going to be the case, but in this, uh, this diagram it is. So you do that from the right side of the car as well as from the left side of the car, and you find your instant center for both sides of the car. And the next step to find the actual roll center is to draw a line from one side of the car's instant center to the opposite side of the car's contact patch, the center of the contact patch of the tire. So in this case, if we start at the right again, the instant center happens to be located right where the hinge pin is. But if we just draw a line, which is represented by this green dotted line, we draw a line to the center of the tire contact patch and then do the same thing from the left side instant center and draw a line to the right tires center of the contact patch. So we have these two dotted green lines now and they cross each other at the roll center. So where the two lines from the instant centers to the contact patch centers intersect, where those two lines meet is your roll center. And as you change the location of any of these pivot points up or down, you can see how this is gonna affect where these red lines and green lines will eventually intersect each other and cause the roll center to move locations. So for this purpose, of the demonstration. I just wanted you to kind of see what these, um, you know, how you can use a diagram um, 
you know you can take a picture of your car from the rear however you want to do it if you if you're curious about just you know the little imaginary place where your car kind of pivots as the chassis rolls you can do that by drawing out these lines and see where they intersect the first step is to find your instant centers the second step is to is to find your actual roll center okay now the roll center is important because it's it's the location that your car is going to to roll left or right okay it's like the the center bar of a teeter-totter we'll just assume for the sake of explanation that the roll center is in the dead center of the car um, it's it's below the chassis but above the ground level and um, it's it's right in the center from left to right okay and then we also have a center gravity on the car which is where the you know the mass the you know the parts of the car all have weight so the center of gravity of the car is going to be higher or lower depending on how your components are mounted on the car but um, for the purpose of demonstration you just have to know that your car has a center of gravity and if there were no springs or shocks or uh, you know if nothing was holding the car up the center of gravity the, high, <clears throat> the higher the center of gravity is the more the car is going to want to roll over to the outside as you go uh, around a corner and there's lateral forces applied. Um, the roll center is where that center of gravity is going to pivot. Roll centers become important when you measure or at least when you understand the distance between the center of gravity and the roll center is the moment arm. The longer that distance is the more the car is going to be able to roll when lateral forces are applied to the car. Okay, left or right. That's, it's going to increase the amount of roll the lower the roll center is or the higher the center of gravity is. The longer that this moment arm is, the more the car will roll. The shorter that the moment arm is, which would mean the roll center could be higher or the center of gravity could be lower. But if, if the moment arm were shortened, the car would not roll as much. It would stay much flatter. It's, I think of it as a, a, a ratchet compared to a breaker bar. The longer your moment arm is, is like using a big long breaker bar to loosen a bolt we have all that leverage or the moment arm is that long it can very easily move the bolt or in this case it would turn the car to the left or right pivoting on the roll center okay if you're using just a tiny little wrench that doesn't have any leverage that's like a, a very small moment arm, a very short moment arm. It doesn't have much power to apply against the center of gravity to make the car roll in a corner. So if you have a fixed center of gravity, but you lower your roll center, you're going to have a longer breaker bar to apply force against the car and make it roll more, a lot more chassis body roll, whatever term you want to use. If you raise your roll center and shorten the moment arm, the car's not going to roll very much at all. It's going to stay a lot flatter. The tires aren't going to receive as much weight transferred from the center of gravity to the contact patch. So you're going to have less lateral traction. The car's going to stay flatter. It's going to uh, it's going to rotate more. It might rotate too much and cause you to spin out. Um, or if this was the front of the car, it may cause the front of the car to not steer. So the longer applies more, uh, more weight to the contact patch. The shorter the moment arm, the less weight is applied and the less traction that you'll gain. Okay? Clear as mud, right? Okay, let's move on and we'll talk about how you can change where your roll center is located. Okay, I'm back. Different picture to look at here, right? 
It's the same picture, but I made some changes to where the components are located on the car, which will change the location of the roll center. Um, there's also some text boxes on here that will describe a little bit more about what we're looking at. So I'm just going to leave this up on the screen. You may uh, choose to make a screenshot of this, whatever you want to do, but um, it describes the different terms that I was using earlier. So the, uh, the blue lines on this picture represent the new lines um, to locate the instant centers and then from there to locate the new roll center location. So if you look at the back of the car, it's the same car. It has the same tires. It has the same lower suspension arms. The only thing that changed was the upper camber links are mounted higher on the shock tower. So the line from the tire, which is where the upper hub is located, is still in the same location. But where it connects to the shock tower has been raised. It's been moved up. Okay, so you can see down below where the old red dotted lines are that we looked at earlier. And now you can see where the blue line touches the shock tower is where the camber link is now located. It's been moved up, okay, on both sides. So now we have raised our rear camber links. The only thing we did was just raise them on the shock tower. Every other point that we talked about earlier is the same. So if we now draw our lines out to infinity and go from the right side of the car first, let's say, we'll go from the right and we'll follow this blue line from where the camber link attaches to the hub to where the camber link attaches to the shock tower. And then we'll continue that blue line all the way out here on the left side of the car, all the way out to infinity, okay? Way over here is our, our instant center. Okay, we do the same thing with the left side of the car. We follow the blue lines out to the right, take them all the way out to the right side of the screen, and we have an instant center on the other side. So as you can see in this demonstration, the instant centers are nowhere near as close to the center of the car as they were. They're farther out, outside of the, the tread width. That's fairly normal. Um, now we have to find where the roll center is, and by using our new instant centers and we still have our same um, uh, contact patch that we used at the uh, the center of the tires and we draw the the next blue line to connect our instant center on the right hand side to the contact patch on the left hand side then we draw a line from our instant center on the left hand side to the contact patch on the right hand side so now we have a new intersection which causes us to have a lowered roll center. So if you look right in the middle of the car, we now have, you can see underneath there is the old roll center. It's kind of a circle there, a little black circle. And now our new roll center is below it. So when we lowered the roll center, that caused us to have a longer moment arm. So the center gravity is the same, that didn't change either. But our roll center is now below the original roll center. So to reach the center gravity, it has to be a longer moment arm. And as we talked about, when you have a longer moment arm, it's like having a big long torque wrench or a big long breaker bar that allows you to apply a lot more torque or pressure um, to rotate something. So in this case, the, the body roll is going to rotate at the roll center and the longer moment arm is going to cause more body roll as lateral forces are applied. So we're going to have a lot more body roll, which is going to transfer a lot more weight to the outer tire. It's going to give us more traction. Okay. If we had raised the roll center, and shortened our moment arm, then we'd have less traction. So one way to think about it is don't worry about which way the roll center is going. Just kind of understand what roll centers are. But if you think about it, when you raise 
the camber link, you raise traction to the outside tire. Because when you raise the camber link, it ends up with no other changes, okay? So simply by raising the camber link and only raising the camber link, you will increase body roll, which will raise the amount of traction that you get laterally when you're going around a corner, okay? So raising the camber link raises the amount of traction, lowering the camber link lowers the amount of traction laterally, okay? We're not talking about forward bite at this point, we're just talking about sideways traction, lateral traction, going around a corner and either traction rolling or um, spinning out, that kind of traction, okay? So raise your camber links when you need more side bite, lower your camber links when you need less side bite. Yeah, so just look down uh, in the comments below if you have any questions, uh, write them down there and I'll answer them for you. I uh, hope this wasn't overly complicated, but uh, it's kind of nice to sort of understand why things happen the way they do. So uh, uh, go ahead and hit the like button if you learned anything. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so when we come out with new videos, you'll get to see them. And if you have a question, if you have a suggestion, a comment, anything at all, feel free to write them in the comments and uh, you'll get more from us later. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time and we will talk to you later. Until then, soar on.